Hello and welcome to a video of the solution of the lesson review problem 6-14, which is a review problem from the statics and strength of materials problem from Riley et al. This is a two-dimensional static equilibrium problem. And in this case, we're looking at a cantilevered beam. And we'll talk more in detail about that in just a moment. But this particular problem, 6-14, is found on page 269 of your textbook. First, let's begin by reading the problem. This beam is loaded as shown and supported as shown. And at A, we have a fixed support. We'll talk more about what that means in just a moment. We're asked to find the reaction at support A. And that's what we'll do. Well, we've read the problem, and we're ready to draw a picture. We always want to draw free body diagrams, particularly in CE 300 and most of your subsequent engineering courses. And we're going to draw a free body diagram of member AB. If you recall from lesson four, we want to isolate that body from all of its surroundings. And we'll do that with just a simple sketch of this beam AB. And we'll label it so that we know which end is which. There's A. And there's B. Now, in order to make this a complete free body diagram, we need to include all of the external loads and applied moments. So we have a 2 kilonewton load applied at point B. At mid-span, we have a clockwise moment of 3 kilonewton meters. And that is applied at a point at mid-span. So we'll just denote that with a point there. And maybe we'll go ahead and call that point C. We also need to include all reaction forces. A fixed support is our most resistant type of support available in two dimensions. Well, actually in three dimensions also, but in two dimensions it has, it resists mo movement, that is, resists movement in the y direction. Of course, I'm talking in a coordinate system that I have not defined, so let's define our coordinate system in x and y and it resists movement in the y direction, so it's going to have a support in the y direction. It also resists movement horizontally or in the x direction, so it's going to have a reaction in that direction. Now, a fixed support also prevents rotation, or it prevents this beam from rotating about point A. In order to resist rotation, we must therefore have a moment. Since in our world that we have defined, counterclockwise is positive, we'll draw this as a positive moment, and we'll let the mathematics tell us if we're right in that assumption. We'll just note this as the moment reaction at A. This is still not a complete free body diagram. We need to have dimensions on this diagram, so we'll go ahead and label our dimensions as given in the problem 2 meters and 2 meters. Now, it's important to note that you should not simply use this drawing given in your text as your picture in this step of the problem-solving process. You really want that free body diagram, and we have it done at this point. The next thing to do is apply our principles, and we're going to apply the principle of two-dimensional equilibrium. In order to apply this principle, we need to classify the force system. The force system can be either concurrent or non-concurrent, concurrent force system is that in which all the lines of action of, of each force intersect at a single point. Well, in this case, we have an applied moment or an applied couple. By default, this is a non-concurrent force system, not to mention the fact that the lines of action of all these individual forces do not intersect at a single point. Since it is a non-concurrent force system, we have three equations of equilibrium. And before we dive right in and start building those equations, let's just verify our unknowns and make sure that we have enough equations of equilibrium to solve for our unknowns. All of our unknown values are associated with the support reaction at A. And we have A sub X, A sub Y, and the moment reaction at A. That's three. We've got three equations to solve for those three unknowns. Puts a smile on our faces. So now it's time to begin to build those equations. We want to consider finding an equation that can, one equation that can solve for one unknown. In this case, with this fixed support on this cantilevered beam, it's really pretty simple, and it doesn't matter which equation of equilibrium we begin with. So let's just begin with the sum of it, summation of forces in the x direction.
it's going to equal zero. We'll, to the right is positive according to our sign convention. And we'll build this equation by starting at the left and working right. And we have a sub x, and that is the only force acting in the x direction, so we can say with certainty that a sub x is zero kilonewtons. Magnitude of zero has no direction associated with it, so that is a complete answer. Next equation of equilibrium we'll apply will be the summation of forces in the y direction. That's going to be equal to zero. Up is positive according to our sign convention, and we'll begin at the left and move right. And we see we have a sub y is positive. As we move along our beam, we come to this applied moment. That does not enter into either of our force equations. The next thing we come to is the 2 kilonewton force, and it's down, so it's a negative 2 kilonewtons. Mathematically, solving that pretty simply, we see that A sub Y, or the Y reaction at point A, is 2 kilonewtons positive. Positive telling us that the way we drew it on our free body diagram is in fact correct. So a complete answer includes that direction. Up is positive. final equation of equilibrium that we have available to us is the summation of moments. Now in order for this beam to be in equilibrium, this moment equation must be satisfied at every point. We only need to pick one to ensure that it's satisfied, and we'll just go ahead and pick point A, although you could pick nearly any point you wished. Some may be a little bit more simple than others uh, as far as building your equation goes. The first thing we encounter is this applied moment reaction at A. Now, since we drew it in the counterclockwise motion, it is positive in our equation. Since both A sub X and A sub Y pass through point A, they have no moment about that point because the perpendicular distance between their lines of action and that point of rotation is zero. Moving along the beam, we next come to point C, where we see that applied moment of three kilonewton meters. Since this is an applied moment or a couple, it's a free vector. We don't need to multiply it by a distance, and we can also note that by looking at the units already associated with it being a force times a distance. Now that is rotating in a count or in a clockwise direction, so that's going to be negative in our equation. The last thing we come to is our two kilonewton force at a distance of four meters from point A, about which we're summing moments, and that's going to also rotate in a clockwise direction for a negative sign. Moving terms around in the equation and solving for that moment reaction at A, we'll find that it is going to be 11 kilonewton meters positive, which means our assumed direction was correct. So it is a counterclockwise moment. We have now solved for all of the support reactions at point A. So we have done what's asked of us in the problem. We used math to solve those equations of equilibrium. Let's answer this question. Does the answer make sense? First of all, does it make sense that there is no x direction reaction? If you look at the applied moments and forces, you see nothing applied that's trying to pull it out of the wall or push it into the wall. So yeah, it makes sense that there is no x direction reaction. Similarly, looking at the y component of the reaction force, there's only one force pushing down at A, there can only be something pushing up that's going to be equal and opposite to that, and in fact, that's what we see happens mathematically from our equations of equilibrium. Now, what about that moment? The magnitude of the moment is hard to check just conceptually, but we can certainly check that direction conceptually. If we notice, the tendency of this beam would be to rotate clockwise due to the applied moment as well as this force. We're going to try to move that beam and rotate it this way. The only way to keep that from happening is to have a moment counteracting that by, by pushing back or rotating back in the counterclockwise direction. So yes, the answers do make sense, and you have solved yet another two-dimensional static equilibrium problem.